Hi everyone, welcome back to Metanoia. I'm going to be taking a break in this video from my normal routine of repeating numbers. Uh, I'm very much getting into the flow of springtime and summertime and just kind of want to take a break from routine where I, uh, you know, get my thoughts collected enough to do something like a presentation, which is the format of my repeating numbers video. So it's really nice to have the opportunity to take a break from that just have a very easy easy going uh, video where I kind of do like a little show and tell something that I'm really enjoying right now and I hope that you guys like my videos on Oracle and if not just stay tuned until you know the next video which will be continuing the series now before I get started I just want to quickly mention that I am on patreon and lately I really really want a video recording camera uh, everything that I do on my channel is either on my phone or through my webcam on my computer at home, which is fine. It takes really good shots, but, uh, you know, I would like, I would like this to be a little bit better. I don't know if you can tell right now, but the angle is a little bit off and that's because I really go out of my way to try and find places in nature where I can record on my phone. In fact, this phone, the, the phone that I'm recording on right now is on a little tripod the kind that you kind of like twist around stuff and it's twisted around a branch on this tree right here and like these are the lengths that I have to go through to like record a video outside and I'm getting a little bit tired of doing that I want to take you guys more places I want to show you guys you know this my summer you know I want to show you guys the the local nature around me while while doing these videos and uh, the the way that you can help me do that is support me on patreon and that is not a one-way street that is a way for you to support this channel uh, and also get a reading from me for just five dollars a month i do monthly readings for everyone and it is personal you know first i start off really big you know what the human race is going through but i look at your birthdays individually so you know i wouldn't want to do it any other way uh, i put a lot into that video too sometimes i put my own money into it I'll, I'll buy candles for you guys or you know some sort of healing modality so i just want to make that known to you anyone who's new to this channel and wasn't aware of that or any of you have been here for a long time and would like to support this endeavor and have videos that are a little bit better and you know have a little bit more of uh, my view of nature and things of that nature uh, but yeah so I think that's all I have to say in this video uh, now I'm going to move on to something that also has to do with nature and that is the illuminated earth oracle and this oracle deck is by hold on Claire Mack and I bought this deck on Etsy, so I'll leave a link in the description uh, to her shop. And mostly I do unboxing videos, but when I received this in the mail, I did not feel like I wanted to do what I normally do, which is just hold off until uh, I can record the unboxing and you get to witness my initial reactions to the deck. I really felt an instant connection with the deck and then I wanted to open it privately and start working with it and so that is that is how this transformed into a review instead of an unboxing video. So I'm going to show you the cards and also give you my feedback on this deck which is extremely positive. I've been working with this deck almost every day since I got it. I'll start off with the basics first and foremost. Cardstock is really good. This is something that will last a long time. It's something that I'm not afraid to, uh, you know, use or you know try to be careful with in the event that you know they start to fray and fall apart. Um, so right off the bat, there's that. The box is nice and sturdy which is useful when you're collecting a lot of decks and you have them piled on top of one another in a corner somewhere me i i there's so much to say about this deck i i don't know where to begin uh it's just the the artwork is surreal and it sort of combines 
a surrealism type of style with with nature with earth with the energy of earth and that is something i personally can connect with very easily this this deck that's why i wanted to open this deck immediately i just could kind of tell that this artist's interpretation of nature was something that I have also experienced myself on a very deep level. And so I would not be surprised if this was the same way for you guys, for anyone watching right now. Uh, but like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start showing you the cards to show you what I mean, and then you can tell me what you think. So for example, stillness. And this is where <laughs> a better camera would would help me out. It's not that the quality of the video would be better, but it's like, if you guys help me got a new system, I, I could find a place in the sun and set up. You know, I wouldn't have to rely on sitting next to a tree that conveniently has a branch that I can attach my little tripod to. So anyway, back to the deck, stillness. Accomplishment. This was the first card that I was very drawn to in this deck. It's just a depiction of this guy who kind of reminds me of the magician. He's holding a play card in his hand and there's a rabbit on his shoulder kind of looking back. And I ended up actually drawing that card too. That was the first card I pulled for myself. Resistance. And let me show you what the back of the cards look like as well. Very earthy, but also uh, kind of, you can feel other elements at play, like air and water as well, in the back of this deck. Next card we have is Gifts. And as I do with every video, I will pull a card for you guys or a few cards, you know, I'll do a reading, kind of like what I do in my Patreon videos. Uh, combustion. And I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's like the cards are very diverse, both in artwork and keywords. So there's a lot to work with. It's for this reason that this is a deck that you could use every day. And before I bought this deck, you know, I was reading the reviews and people also said that it was very complimentary with tarot readings, although I haven't done that yet. This is upheaval. I don't know if you can see, but there are some sheep there and kind of like a tornado looking thing. And then that artwork at the top. dreams. And this is a lovely deck to have in the setting I'm in right now. I don't know if you guys can tell, like I've taken this, this uh, setting in many of my videos now, this very specific spot, and that was back before springtime or when springtime was just beginning. This is childhood. And nothing was alive yet <laughs> but now it's like the middle of May and things are starting to grow and so all the trees that are around me like I have a whole canopy of trees in front of me like they have leaves now and so it's like it's quieter and there is a stillness yet a vibrancy to this physical location now and I'm like I picked a good place like I couldn't tell in winter but I'm very secluded over here and it's hard hard to find a place like that where I'm living. Sorry I'm not talking about the deck enough, but this says blocked. Yeah, the surrealism of this deck is a symbol, a representation of the message that is very easy for me to connect to and get in tune with and try to get to the heart of the message that I'm meant to receive. Deluge, this cloud, it's raining into an ocean and the, the artwork is just plain stunning Claire has mad skills I am just utterly impressed I love having this in my my repertoire renewal
concealed. Productivity. And in this imagery, you can see like honeycomb. Delicious. Right now we're in an eight month, so this was. This is this month right here, this card. <laughs> watch, watch us pull this card in the reading today. <laughs> yeah. Reaping what you sow, that's, that's the month of May, 2019. This says influence. If I had any complaints at all, if, <laughs> keyword, it would be the guidebook. It is very small. That's completely fine because sometimes that's appropriate. Sometimes it is more appropriate to have a smaller guidebook, first of all, for financial purposes, for the consumer and the creator, uh, but also you leave more to interpretation to that person. And so now you have a more expansive view of the card and a way for that person to connect it on a level that they're meant to. So, small guidebooks, this says Epiphany, uh, are not a bad thing at all. However, as a writer and as a lover of Alana Fairchild, like my favorite decks are from her, um, I do wish for something a little bit more wordy and a little bit more channeled. And obviously this artwork is utterly channeled, so her work is done. <laughs> But, you know, I've always said that I want to someday pair up with an artist and co-create a deck together where this person, you know, channels their artwork and then I, you know, through my eyes, look at their artwork and do a channeled message and write a guidebook for them. Because um, I there's just, there's many layers to understanding in in this in this type of work in this type of artwork as there is any artwork at all however i think that there is something to be said for uh looking at something like you know this this for example moon well this is straightforward because because it's the moon but meditating on it and doing sort of a channeled message or what they often call automatic writing and having that available for the person because it's like if you if you receive something in that way chances are you're going to channel something that someone's meant to hear and so that's that's my thoughts on guidebooks and things of that nature but i will say that the guidebook itself even though it's small it does get to the point, like there are a few compelling sentences all, most of the time, like there's usually at least one compelling sentence for that card that gets to the point and is very accurate and helpful. So it's not poorly written, it's just very small. Uh, decay. And like I said, I think when you have, have artwork that is, it's advanced. You, you don't really need an extensive uh, guidebook. It's just my, my opinion. Relationship. I don't think I'll show you the whole deck. I think I'm just going to do a few more cards and keep some of it a surprise for you guys. Healing. I've pulled this the most, <laughs> I think. Patience. There you have the crystals in like such celestial dreamscapes. Mystery. Okay, one more, guys. One more card. Tempest. Yeah. I, there's, there's few decks that I've received that I haven't just, it, it, they kind of just go above and beyond for me. Like 
I've never received a deck that I didn't like. <sighs> but there are just, there are certain decks that stand above the rest for me. And I think that's common for most people for whatever reason. It's just this, they have that one particular deck that speaks to them the most. And this is one of them for me. Maybe when I do another video on like favorite Oracle decks or whatever, this will be in it. I would not be surprised. So I'm going to start shuffling these and I'll probably edit out a lot of it because, um, you know, I'm not going to make you sit and watch me do this, but sometimes I do end up talking and I end up keeping it in there anyway, but the the texture of the cards do make them kind of stick together a bit so i've been working with them a bit trying to get them separated and not stick so much and i've been successful i think after just doing that every now and then and perhaps even leaving them apart instead of in a stack for some reason that helps i find uh, but eventually if you have that problem with your decks like they have this very thick like matte finish they're not very glossy sometimes they get stuck to each other so I recommend when you're shuffling sometimes just taking each card individually separating them or like I said leaving and leaving them out spread out uh, to kind of get them to separate a bit so that when you're shuffling you know they're not all coming apart Ooh, butterfly as I'm shuffling I also want to apologize for being inside all the time, but it's it's been raining constantly. Okay, we have some cards here. Okay. So you guys got two cards so far. Maybe I'll leave it at this. I'm not sure. But we have Harmony, which is a beautiful card. I recently did a video, the 666 video, uh, which was all about harmony or the number sixes anyway, not just that video. Often family matters as well. And we have the multiverse. So let me get the guidebook for you guys to give you an example of what that's like. So this is the guidebook. It's just a little, you know, pamphlet, cute little guy. It's travel size. Um, let's start with harmony. Okay. This states, as with a moving symphony, a harmonious state of accord is reached through shared vision and attunement to a higher purpose. Working with others to achieve this state accentuates progress in areas of our lives that may feel dissonant. So... I really like that interpretation of this card. I mean, I would not necessarily think harmony, oh, I need to be more connected to those around me and I need to be reminded that I can't just do this alone. I need other people uh, and I need to be in harmony with those around me in order to have this kind of co-creative experience. And just taking this like a step back a bit, like zooming out of the, the small picture, we are now in the age of Aquarius, as they say, and this is becoming a lot about community. This experience that we're moving into now is starting to be more of a challenge based on how well can we work with one another. It's weird because Aquarius is also all about technology and technology is a double-edged sword because we're all isolated now. Uh, we all kind of just stay behind our screens all day because being around other people is very difficult. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is very difficult being around other people. But especially since we got the multiverse card in here, I feel like, okay, first of all, we don't, we, we don't need to be in the, these limited spaces. We don't need to be in these isolated spaces where we're so closed off to everyone and then we kind of just become this echo chamber, this, this bubble where we are kind of just always immersed in our own negative patterns, our own negative stories, our own negative everything all the time. 
and then we become out of harmony with our environment whether it's the people around us or maybe even like things aren't really working for us anymore things that used to make us feel better like you know the meditative practices with oracle decks or being out in nature if we kind of <clears throat> excuse me if we kind of get caught up in our own little echo chamber and are separate from everyone and are you know not in harmony with our communities with the multiverse you know this much bigger picture we get out of alignment with our purpose and we you know end up someplace that's not where we meant to go so that to me is what this is this is hinting on but let's read what the multiverse says here in this little book i'm interested to know okay so this says the multiverse consider the theory of multiple dimensions of reality all existent at once as the five senses of humanity expand to acknowledge such alternative concepts our experiences intuition and dreams may reveal fascinating moments of synchronicity notice these moments and let your consciousness expand to accept the possibilities and that's what I mean by compelling sentences. It's like, it's short, it's sweet, it's to the point. But this guidebook is quite compelling, despite how, how tiny it is. And I want to just kind of expand on this message. So I want to ask this deck to elaborate a little bit more. Maybe be a little bit more specific with anyone who's watching right now. Because that was a very big message. Thank you guys for helping me to get to 400 subscribers. I'm going to be very excited when I reach 500 because I've been working very hard to reach that number for a long time now. Please share my channel with anyone you might know who would like this. It's hard to, to like market my channel because I do so many different things. It's a uh, YouTube algorithms don't really comply with something that is so broad as consciousness. Ooh, okay, here we go. Earth, here we go. So this is asking you to get grounded, asking you to get out in nature to expand within the multiverse as above, so below. So it's always so interesting how somehow, and I think I reflected on this briefly once in a video when I asked, what does it mean to be grounded? Being grounded is a strange concept because oddly enough, when we are grounded, you know, when you, you think kind of like a more limiting type of thing, it's not. It's like the second that you get in tune with nature, the second that you go outside and you get your your skin in contact with the sun and with uh, you know growing plants maybe in your garden if you don't have a place to walk in nature um when you put your feet in the in the water whether it's a lake or the ocean all of a sudden it's like you expand and it's like your bubble becomes larger and you're able to feel much more connected to the expansiveness of this world you know you're able to get out of your head you're able to get out of whatever limiting experience that you have and feel connected again and be able to harmonize and maybe even with the people that you love or that are around you or you know the future people that you're meant to be with so yeah, I think I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this deck or you know anything that I've said in this video. Uh, and stay tuned till next week because I will be continuing my repeating number series, which will be on the number eight eight eight. And this bird is right above my head doing things so i think i'm gonna go now <laughs> thank you again i hope you're having a lovely week and take care